Hello, this is Joan Fernley, your French diction coach for choirs. And today I will be reading a classic of the French choral literature, The Cantique de Jean Racine by Gabriel Faure. Now this piece is a staple of both church and community choirs, and I think every chorister should have the opportunity to sing this piece at least once in their choral career, no matter their religious persuasion or even their skill level. There are beautiful lines for all the parts, and it's just a wonderfully satisfying piece to sing. So as usual, my video will be in three parts. In the first part, I will do the reading, but I will read it as if I were singing it. And for music of this time period, the R's will be rolled on the tip of the tongue, but just very slightly. And there will be the liaison, so that's the linking between the words in all the right places. In the second part, I will have three tips for both conductors and singers. And then in the final third part, I will have the lesson, the coaching session, where we work through the piece line by line, and you can work along with me. So without further delay, let's get started. Verbigal au très haut, notre unique espérance, jour éternel de la terre et des cieux, de la paisible nuit, nous rompons le silence. Divin Sauveur, jette sur nous les yeux. Répand sur nous le feu de ta grâce puissante, que tout l'enfer fuit au son de ta voix. Dissipe le sommeil d'une âme languissante qui l'a conduit à l'oubli de tes lois. Ô Christ, sois favorable à ce peuple fidèle. Pour te bénir, maintenant rassemblé, reçois les chants qu'il offre à ta gloire immortelle et de tes dons qu'il retourne comblé. Your first tip are nasalized vowels. And if you want your French to sound truly French, it's well worth putting in the effort and getting a good nasalized sound. And there are four of them in the French language. There is en, on, un, and un. And what they all have in common is a vowel followed by an N or an M. The N and the M do the same thing they let you know that the vowel that comes before is nasalized. Now, it doesn't mean that every time there's an N or an M that follows a vowel that that is a nasalized vowel, but when a vowel is nasalized, you'll always see either an N or an M. Now, the fourth one, a, uh, is not in the cantique, so I won't talk about it in this video. Now that, now that you know how to spot a nasalized sound, how do you do it? Well, it's quite simple. You'll start with a basic vowel and then you drop the soft palate, which lets a bit of air flow through the nose, which is what gives the vowel its nasalized color. So for the ah sound, it's you'll take the ah sound and whether it's an A or an E that precedes, it's the same thing. You'll use the ah sound and you drop the soft palate. So you go from ah, ah. Same thing for on, you start with an O and you drop the palate, so you start O, on. Now make sure that it's a closed O, phonetically closed, but on the inside you should feel like you're really stretching on the inside. You don't want to shut everything down. And O's tend to be sung very closed, and so it's a good reminder to put a lot of O in your O but you still need the nasalized sound. Un is one that's a bit trickier to do because people tend to over nasalize this. They'll go un. So you need to open that up. So you start with an e eh sound and then you drop the palate. E, eh, un. And just keep in mind you want to keep that very open because it, it gets squished pretty quick. Now, 
one thing to keep in mind is to avoid closing the N or the M. And this is a mistake that happens very, very frequently, especially following a consonant. So a closed consonant, like a B or an M. So in the words like comblé, for instance, in the on section, the B is closed and it'll pull the M closed as well if you're not paying attention. And so what I hear is comblé. But that's incorrect. It's two separate sounds, con, blé. You'll get that with conduit as well, with the D, conduit. Again, two very separate sounds, conduit. So think of that N and that M as an indicator. It's a modifier. It gives you instructions for the vowel. Don't think of it as a consonant. It's not actually pronounced. Your second tip is the sound V. And this sound is very difficult to do for English choirs because the U sound is foreign to the English language. So the V sound, you'll find it in the four words, nuit, puissance, conduit, and fui. So how do you do this sound? Because typically what I'll hear will be an U sound, nuit, puissance which does not sound French at all. And the reason is because people are putting an O sound, not an U sound. It's a completely different sound. So how do you get that U sound? Well, you start with E and that's your bass line. So you start with E and then you round around your E a lot. You really commit. So E, U, and you just pucker right around. Don't be lazy about it, otherwise it sounds like ew, which is not nice at all. So practice going from e to u before you do anything else. E -u. And once you have a handle on that, you can just flip it around because nuit and puissance and so on start with the u. So you go nuit, puissance. So work it very, very slowly because you do need to get that U so that it can sound very French. Now, if you have your score in front of you, you might be wondering, there's a word missing, the word languissante. And you'll notice that I didn't say languissante, I said languissante. And the reason is because the U and the I don't go together. The U is there to modify the G. So in French, we have two G sounds. We have a soft G and a hard G. And when G is followed by I, it's a soft G. But in order to do a word like languissante, we need to harden the G. And the U is the letter that signals that the G is going to be a hard G. So the word is languissante. And it's not languissante, and it's definitely not Languissante. Your third tip is related to the words that I've put up on the screen. Is it e or is it e? Do you say les, de, or do you say les, de? And as a native French speaker, this gave me pause because I realized that I did both. In speech, I lean towards e, and in reading and singing, I lean towards e. And both are correct. If you go on Wikipedia, you'll see the symbol for the A sound, which does reflect standard speech beyond in Canada, France, and beyond. But the more formal French, or what's called un français soutenu, so sustained, so think of being able to sustain your speech in a large hall, or singing a more formal style, which is the style of Gabriel Faure. It's the classical style, so you would have had very good diction. And in that category, we go towards E. And so it's not so much as to what will sound French in your performance of the Cantique, but you may wonder why you might have had conflicting advice. You might have had some people say it's E, and you might have had a singing teacher say, no, it's more E. And so just so you know, both are correct and they have their own specificity. 
also you may have some native French speakers in your choir and they may question why it's E or why it's E. So just think of it as a continuum also because the A it doesn't have to be so closed and the E doesn't have to be so open. Uh, when you're singing in the lower register you may want to have a darker or a more closed sound and when you're opening up to do higher notes you may want to open that up a bit and I've heard French choirs actually do that whether they knew it or not um, the it sounded more E in the lower register and a little bit more E. Overall though for this kind of music you definitely lean more towards E. Okay this is part three of the coaching session so let's get started. First line, Verbiga l'autre haut, notre unique espérance. So you'll probably have noticed that there's a lot of connection between words. That's a, called a liaison, where we connect one word after the next. But we don't do it everywhere, so it's very important to keep that in mind. And sometimes it's useful to have a very well edited edition because they'll put those in. So you say verbigalo, so you'll connect those, but tre o is not connected because that H is, is a glottal H. Tre o, never tre zo. Notre unique espérance. So you have a lot of liaison in this section. You also have the sound u, which in part two we spoke a lot about that. It's very important to get a true French. And at the end, you have the nasal sound, espérance. So I'll do that line again. Verbigalo très haut, notre unique espérance. Next line. Jour éternel de la terre et des cieux. So a few things. Let's start at the end. Cieux, that's a tricky one. You have to get the E sound at the very beginning and e. and e is basically a rounded uh sound it's the sound duh <laughs> keep that in mind because it's going to come up quite a bit you'll have in this piece either an uh sound or an e uh sound and it's all made the same way it's an uh and then you round to get the e uh sound but in this case with this word you get the e sound that comes before it so it's really useful to take all this apart and just figure out what these sounds are in isolation so then you can put it all together. So that word is sieux. Now before that you have the word de and that discussion on tip number three we lean more towards an e than an e. If I were speaking I would say des yeux. When I sing I say des yeux. It's subtle but it's there. And at the very beginning you have the ou sound of jour. So I'll say the whole line again. Jour éternel de la terre et des cieux. Next line. De la paisible nuit, nous rompons le silence. So you have a lot of pitfalls in this line and it almost feels like you could say the whole line with your lips all puckered with nuit, nous rompons le so it, it's a bit of gymnastics and it's a bit of a tongue twister. Right in the middle you get nuit and you have nous and this brings out all the pitfalls. So if you recall I said most of the time people pronounce nuit wrong they put an ou sound instead of an u and so they'll say nuit and not nuit. But what's difficult is you have the word nous right next to it. So take your time. Take it all apart. Nui and nu. So practice that so that it just rolls off the tongue. And then you get the word rompon. And I also mentioned that when the, the nasalized sounds are followed by a consonant like a B or in this case a P, singers tend to close the M and they pronounce the M, but the M is not a consonant here. It's a modifier. It tells you that it's nasal. So it's rompon and not rompon. <laughs> so it's very important to practice that distinction. 
And of course you have the word silence. Now there won't be the tendency of doing the N here because the C doesn't close. It's not, your lips aren't closed. So that doesn't tend to be a problem there. So let's do that whole line and I won't be spending as much time on every line, just getting a few of these sounds out of the way. De la paisible nuit, nous rompons le silence. The next line. Diva sauveur jette sur nous les yeux. So let's start at the beginning. You have the first instance of the uh, nasalized sound. So you start with an E eh, and you, you drop the soft palate and it turns into uh, eh, uh, diva. But you have to keep it open. You don't want to over nasalize it because you'll compromise the singing. Then you have so, closed O, the. You get that uh sound that I spoke about. Jette sur, a nice good U, followed by the nu, which is the U. So again, practice your U and U. Les yeux, which is the same as su. So again, diva sauveur, jette sur nous les yeux. Next line. Répand sur nous le feu de ta grâce puissante. So you start with a nasal and you end with a nasal. So you have répan, and the D and the S are not pronounced. And at the end, you have the word puissante. You have two pitfalls there. So you want a good en at the end, but remember it's puissante and not puissante. Very subtle, it's like nuit at the very beginning. You may wonder what the accent is on the A uh of grâce. In back in the olden days, that would have closed the A uh a bit and it would have been more like a grâce. But that has disappeared and it is grâce. So ta and grâce are the same A. Uh. There's no difference. And right in the middle, you have the word feu and it's, it's the same as sieu, same sound, feu. So it's a closed E. Again, do the whole line. Répand sur nous le feu de ta grâce puissante. Next line. Que tout l'enfer fuit au son de ta voix. So at the very end, we're introducing for the first time the wa sound. So there is a bit of an ou at the beginning, but you go straight to an a sound. Wa, voix, and you sing on the a sound. Right in the middle, you have another V sound and it's preceded by fui. And people do tend to trip over that and they say fui, but that sounds like fui. So it's definitely V, fui. So the whole line, que tout l'enfer fuit au son de ta voix. Next line, dissipe le sommeil d'une âme languissante. So at the beginning, uh, you get the word sommeil, and it's the first time you'll hear the sound A. So it's an A sound with a little Y at the end, but it's treated as a consonant. It's only at the very, very end. You don't actually sing much on that sound. So it's sommeil, and you do a little Y at the end. And again, you have am. Um, we have the little accent or an accent circonflexe in French. That does not change the color of the A. Uh, it is an A. Uh. Sound in am, am, and then you have languissante. So it's not langui and it's not gui. It's languissante. Next line, qui la conduit à l'oubli de tes lois. So we have the word conduit, and that's one of your pitfalls because of the d. Singers will be tempted to close the n and sing conduit. So make sure you avoid that. It is Conduit. Make sure it's a good V because it's followed by oubli. Again, the O. So it's like nuit and nous at the beginning. And then we get T de T. So we lean towards E. Loi. Same as voix. So the whole line. Qui la conduit à l'oubli de tes lois? Au Christ 
soit favorable à ce peuple fidèle. So this line starts with an O with the accent on top and that accent does have a purpose. It is a closed O. It's not A Christ, it is O Christ. But don't let the word O mislead you because on the inside you need to be very open. Don't make it fully vocally closed. It's only phonetically closed. So you have to have a lot of surprise on the inside. O Christ. And now you pull out all your best consonants. Christ. <laughs> Soi, c'est moi. Favorable à ce peuple. The E uh sound. Fidèle. So one more time. O Christ. Soit favorable à ce peuple fidèle. Next line. Pour te bénir maintenant rassemblé. So right in the middle you have the second nasalized A sound with the maintenant, M-A-I-N. So A-I-N is an A sound. So think again, an A that you nasalized maintenant. But again, it has to be open, otherwise it'll sound maintenant, it'll be too squished. And the rassemblé is a pitfall because of the B, tempted to close the M, so don't rassemblé. So the whole line again, pour te bénir maintenant rassemblé. Next line, reçois les chants qu'il offre à ta gloire immortelle. So at the very beginning, you'll notice there's a little symbol under the C, and that's a sedilla, and that's there to soften the C so that it's not a K sound, it's an S sound. Because when a C comes before an O, it is a K sound normally, and that sedilla softens the C. So you get reçois, and you get the wa sound that we discussed earlier. Chant has the nasalized A sound. And all the other sounds are sounds that you've seen already. So we'll do this line again. Reçois les chants qu'il offre à ta gloire immortelle. And the next line. Et de tes dons qu'il retourne comblé. So again, just like rassembler earlier, comblé is another pitfall because of the B. The M will tend to be closed, but don't comble, not comble. Just make sure you watch out for that. You have retourne, a nice O sound, and the rest of the sounds are sounds that you've seen already. So we'll do it one more time. Et de tes dons qu'il retourne comble. Well, there you have it, the Cantique de Jean Racine. Thank you for watching. Let me know if there's any songs you would like me to tackle. I've just put that down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, bye.